Well, since I put out my reaction to Rolling Stone's 250 Greatest Guitar Players of All Time list, everyone was clamoring for a new list of rankings. Well, I'm not going to do 250, that's crazy, but I will add 50 guitar players that Rolling Stone left off their list. You can choose who needs to be removed from their list, I'm not going to do that, but obviously if you read the article, you'll know exactly who to pull off the list and replace with truly great guitar players. And the funny thing is, I didn't actually take very much time to create this list. It all kind of just came right off the top of my head in 15 minutes. If you ever consider making your own top 100 guitar players or top 50 guitar players list, it might be easier than you think if you just start writing names down. And before we get into my very subjective, highly contentious list, I want to let you know that Guitar Super System, my learning app for guitar players, is on sale for Black Friday, and I know Black Friday hasn't happened yet. <laughs> well, it's a pre-sale, isn't that what the internet does these days? Let's just say we not only got new content coming this month, but giveaways. You interested in this? Yes. So, unlimited musical knowledge, as well as the potential to win an awesome instrument. What could be better than that? Please use the link in the description, and you will automatically have your discount applied. Okay, here we go. 51 guitar players. By the way, I did 51 because somebody already did 50 guitar players. We're all copying each other at this point. 51 guitar players that should have been on the Rolling Stone Top 250 Greatest Guitar Players list, starting with, and in no particular order, Alexi Leo. He created a sound that I think people are still chasing. All of his technique, I think he was getting to a point where he could really play anything and do anything on the guitar, and it sucks that he's gone. He also is a front man, like a singer, just an incredible musician. I really just can't get enough of Hate Breeder, it's my favorite. Next guitar player who got snubbed, Ingve Malmsteen. Truly one of the most identifiable guitar players of all time, and a pioneer of an entire genre, and an inspiration to millions of guitar players throughout the world. Guthrie Govan, literally the the best guitar player in the world, maybe next to a couple different names, which I'll get to on this list, but Guthrie is the guitar player's guitar player. He can play anything. He can really make his guitar sound like anything, and it's just a travesty that he wouldn't be at the top of any guitar-related list. He hasn't put out an album since 2007. He makes stuff with the Aristocrats and plays with Hans Zimmer, but Guthrie, make another album, man. Let these idiots know where you are and what you're up to. John Schofield, one of the first jazz guitar players that I really got into, and he's almost on the cusp of jazz and blues. Falling off the fretboard approach, he'll play a note and he'll just like, just not even care. His attitude is so jazz, but in the coolest way. He's like the epitome of cool. The way he delivers his licks are unlike any guitar player I've really ever heard. Next guitar player who got snubbed, Tony McAlpine. He can play keyboards just as well as he can shred guitars. First was introduced to me, I believe I saw him playing backup in Steve Vai's band. An album called Chromaticity, I believe that's what it was called. For somebody who loves instrumental music, he was like my one of my go-to guys. The next guitar player on here is Brent Mason. Brent is an incredible guitar player and while he's not like my forte, country guitar playing was never what I learned. I have seen him play in person and I'm just like, oh my god. And, and you forget that like, oh, he kind of invented those things. So yes, Brent Mason, absolutely one of the greatest guitar players. Joe Bonamassa is the next guy on our list. How many guitar players love old guitars, memes, and The Simpsons, you know? It's really a trifecta that Joe has going on. Tone and just feel. Just every lick that comes out of him is satisfaction. Paco de Lucia, greatest flamenco guitar player of all time. If you like that kind of polyphia stuff that the guys do on their nylon strings, that's from Paco. Next guitar player who was snubbed by Rolling Stone is Gary Moore. This might have been the most popular comment that I read across my video and other videos, who, people reacting to this list. Gary Moore, Parisian Walkways, if you never heard that one, that would be the first song I check out, but uh, Still Got the Blues is another one, but just these incredibly emotional bends that you get out of him, but also this buildup of intense outbursts of energy and crazy licks and runs that aren't necessarily technically insane, but just the the way the pentatonics and the blues scales work together and his phrasing where he chooses to put certain notes and just the dynamics, his vibrato. I mean, Gary Moore is seriously underrated. Speaking of Moore, 
Vinnie Moore is our next guitar player. Another person who can play literally anything. An attitude adjustment that I needed in my earlier days when I was starting to feel myself. I, I learned like Surfing with the Alien and uh, some other Satriani songs, just like pretty close. And I was like, I'm probably gonna be the best guitar player in the world. And then I heard Vinnie Moore. <laughs> Joe Pass is a jazz guitar player and I learned about him through school. I had to study a lot of jazz in college and Joe Pass and Mick Good Rick were two of the guitar players, two guitar players who I'm including on this list, in fact. And his approaches to playing through harmony are fundamental approaches that are still taught today. And Mick Goodrick has an entire series of books where people will literally just study his methods. And uh, it's essentially just every chord you could ever want to know, inversions, and also the theory behind it. These are just like titans of the jazz world. Paul Gilbert, I mean, Probably the fastest guitar player in the world at one point. I know that saved that for Ingve Malmsteen, but Paul is really great because he taught me how to get away with certain licks. Like he has certain techniques where there's a combination of legato and picking to really facilitate the exact sounds that I had always heard in my head. Me and Paul Gilbert and a lot of guitar players, we all have this certain sound that. It, he's figured out how to play it and we all are like, oh, that's the sound that I wish I knew how to do, but yeah, yeah. John Petrucci is on my list. I can't believe he wasn't on, like, I can't believe Rolling Stone didn't put John Petrucci on. Tommy Emmanuel was snubbed. Another one that a lot of people were citing, like, oh, Tommy Emmanuel's not on this list, this list is irrelevant. One of the best guitar players, not just acoustic guitar players, but guitar players in general. Next on our list is Al Di Miola. Mediterranean Sundance is the sole reason for this. I obviously has listened to a little bit more of his discography, but that song literally changed my whole perspective of what guitar could be. So I didn't know you could switch between chords and licks. This is Neil Sean. It's the sound of a guitar hero. Neil Sean and just a really powerful vibrato and really intensely good melodies. The sensibilities of Neil Sean as well as his technique and just overall attitude. Mike Einzinger, Incubus guitar player and one of the most creative guitar players. His efficiency, his attention to detail and his masterful riffs, his songwriting just he's really one of my favorite guitar players ever. He's really influenced not only my riff playing but also my songwriting style the tones that I choose and things like that he's really influential on me so this is more of a personal pick but I think a lot of people would agree that he's one of the greatest guitar players ever maybe you think of Incubus for like nice to know you or wish you were here uh, drive you know those songs Incubus entire discography is full of guitar nerdery and it's all thanks to Mike Einziger, one of the best. Nick Johnston had met a couple times back in the early days when I was starting out on YouTube. He's still going strong though, the guy's incredible. Tons of crazy legato stuff that he does. A lot of hammer on from nowhere type things and a lot of very fluid motion as far as his whole demeanor. Uh, really great guitar player. Next on our list, Robin Ford. I played uh, on stage with Robin Ford before at Andy Wood's summer camp. Old soul, and that somehow translates into his guitar, and there's not many musicians who are like that. When he plays, it's just like, oh, I'm gonna stop and listen to that. Next on our list, George Benson. Not only is he quick and, and fluid on the jazz stuff, but also just incredible pocket, and that's sort of my X factor for guitar players where I start first is how clean is their rhythm, how tight is it, and really he's the tightest rhythmic cat in the game, as far as I know. And people that I respect who know jazz a little bit more than me, everyone cites George Benson as the king. Next guitar player who got snubbed is maybe the best guitar player ever to have lived. Sean Lane. If you haven't seen Sean Lane, let me just play you this bootleg tape because he was gone too soon, unfortunately. <laughs> Anyway, I can't obviously include playing clips for all these guitar players, that's on you, but hands, like he was a big guy, so you didn't expect his 
hands to like necessarily be so nimble in all this, but oh my gosh. Next on our list is Marty Friedman. Could have put Dave Mustaine in here with him, but I just can't believe they didn't put Marty Friedman on their list. He's in Megadeth and like very renowned. Really confused as to why he wasn't on Rolling Stone's list, but what are we gonna do about it? I'm doing it. Zach Wilde, one of the greatest pinch harmonicers of all time. The pinch harmonic in No More Tears is still echoing through my soul to this day. Next on our list is Billy Corgan, Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, maybe a divisive guitar player, but not every guitar player has to be a crazy technical shred wizard like a lot of them on my list have been. I appreciate songwriting and attention to detail and serving the song, and that's what Billy did the best and does the best is he knows exactly what tone and what part goes for what song and while maybe sometimes the songs that come out aren't your favorite you cannot deny that he has his sound dialed in to a point of mastery and so many good Smashing Pumpkins riffs. There's something to be said for just a riff lord, and Billy Corgan is one of the ultimate riff lords. Next guitar player who got snubbed, Mark Tremonti, one of the biggest guitar players in one of the biggest bands ever. And now that Creed's have their resurgence, you know, have you seen all these Creed memes? How could he not be on the Rolling Stone list? Because his relevance has never been higher, I would say. Same sensibilities that I have a lot of the time, you know, maybe that speaks to a lot of us. He just represents all of us guitar players who just love shredding pentatonic, harmonic minor, like kind of blurring that line, maybe a little wah, some delay, just like the ultimate guitar hero tone. That's Mark Tremonti. Nice guy too. Next up, Buckethead. 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 How is Buckethead not on the list? Buckethead. Billy Strings is the next person on my list, and I think a lot of guitar players would agree he's spectacular. And he's selling out humongous shows all around. It's one thing to sell out a venue playing terrible manufactured songs that everybody knows and that nobody really likes. And it's another thing to be playing sold out venues and big venues I'm talking about where you're actually playing music and not just like kind of half limp syncing and it's more of an entertainment event. This is a real musician who's doing real stuff. That brings me to the next guitar player on our list. Very similarly, Corey Wong. Wolfpack, he's got his own solo act going on, but him and Billy Strings and Mark Letiri is another guy who is on my list here. This sort of new gen of very successful uh, virtuosic guitar players who aren't shredding necessarily, although they can shred. It's a really awesome segment of our culture that I'm really excited to be a part of and try and cultivate through lists like these and letting you guys know about these people, but obviously you already know if you're watching this list who Billy Strings, Corey Wong, and Mark Letiri are, so let's move on to the next person, Dave Matthews. If you heard of Dave Matthews, one of the most incredible rhythm guitar players and singing and playing at the same time, he's one of the best to ever do that. How could they put John Mayer there and not Dave Matthews? Dave Matthews was the original John Mayer. Next on our list, Eric Gales uh, plays guitar left-handed and upside down and plays better than you and me. So he should absolutely be on this list. Next guitar player who got snubbed from the Rolling Stone list is Laurie Basilio. Collaborated with Laurie over the years a couple of different times and had her on my podcast. Incredibly genuine person, but scary good guitar player. Phrase to phrase, and she has this technique where she'll run up the fretboard and cascade this bend to where there wasn't actually an attack. It's just such a Laurie thing. <laughs> picking and articulation, her educational background, uh, just really one of the best guitar players to ever do it. Next on our list is Julian Lodge, and I feel like he's actually getting the appreciation he deserves. Here's some more for you, Julian. You're one of the greatest jazz guitar players, or just guitar players. I hate to put people into genre. I saw him under a jazz context, and he was playing his Telecaster, and uh, it just sounded like somebody who was meant to do that. And when you hear somebody playing an instrument and it sounds like they were meant to do it, they should probably be on the greatest to ever do it list, right? Speaking of a guy who was meant to do it, Jason Becker is next on our list and a sound that people still cite as the pinnacle of fast modern guitar playing. Just really incredible guitar player that again is sort of grandfathered in based on how every other guitar player recognizes him. Wayne Krantz, he is the best 
and you probably have not heard him. But if you have, you are a very lucky person and you know that about yourself. If you haven't, there's a live performance of Whippersnapper you should check out. Uh, there's another thing called Lynx Paw. I created a video called the best blues guitar solo ever, maybe. Billy Joe Armstrong. That's right, no shredding here, just pure, perfect rock pocket. I read somewhere that Billy Joe is recording an album for Green Day and he did all of his guitar tracks for all like 13 songs in one day. And of course Green Day's music isn't technically that intricate, but 13 straight songs in one day and have it sound as good as all these Green Day albums sound. There's a reason that they are such a good band is because their rhythm section is so essentially tight and that is because of Billy Joe and the rest of the guys, but man, what an awesome guitar player. Next guitar player on our list is a fellow YouTube colleague that uh, obviously his skills transcend this platform, Troy Grady, one of the best guitar players on the internet, in the world, whatever you wanna say, this dude teaches things that many people can't even comprehend, and he teaches it in a way that, well, I can comprehend it. Like, I still can't do it, but I can comprehend it. And beyond his educational skills, Troy is a really nice guy. I've met him once or twice over the internet. Out of all the music channels that teach you things, this dude actually deserves all of the subscribers and all of the notoriety for the stuff that he makes, I think. Next on our list, okay, I can't keep saying the best guitar player in the world, but Rick Graham might be the best guitar player in the world. His fluidity of his picking motion, and I can't really tell you which technique he's best at. He's just the best at all of it. And he's got a really sick Charvel signature that I have yet to get my hands on. I need one of those. Another guitar player who I discovered through Rick Graham, a guy named Andy James, another person who, his pinky is the thing that sticks out to me the most. When he plays, his pinky is just like, seems longer than all his other fingers. <laughs> Rolling Stone had a couple duos on their list, so I'm gonna throw in here Misha Mansoor and Mark Holcomb of Periphery. Misha is a really sweet dude. I've met him a couple of different times and really representative of our community in a positive way. Multi-talented people, but the guitar playing is life-changing if you hear it at the right time and you're looking for the right kind of thing, they have their sound dialed in and they facilitate that aesthetic so well with the way they pioneer this really modern guitar sound that we all know and love, most of us. Next guitar player on our list is named David Longstreth. He's in a band called Dirty Projectors. His genius is not only in his guitar playing but in his singing as well. He will sing and play things that make John Mayer singing Neon look like somebody playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. He is definitely deserving to be on the greatest guitar players of all time list. Check him out. Next on our list, the guy who I said is the best guitar player in the world right now, and I made a video about it, Matteo Mancuso. Really just watched the video that I made interviewing Matteo. We went through his album and he, he does, Matteo's the best. Next on our list is Robin Trower. He created Bridge of Size. what do you want? Like, that is the most insanely cool lick, sound, whatever, you, the riff, that enigma of music is beautiful. Kiko Lorayo should be on the list. Anybody who can just take over in Megadeth <laughs> is uh, one of the greatest guitar players ever. Next guitar player got snubbed from Rolling Stone, Orianthi. Anybody with one name has gotta be considered for this list, and anyone who plays with Michael Jackson on their resume, yeah, they'd probably be on. Anyone who has a signature PRS guitar, yeah, things are starting to add up for Orianthi. Next guitar player on our list, Mateus Asato. Most expressive guitar players I've ever heard. Technically, he's a monster, and he seems to be the most humble person. He's a lot like Matteo Mancuso. Two of them have a lot of similarities in their innovations and demeanors, and I also think that the two of those guys, if they started a band, Matteo Mancuso and Matteo Asado, the whole guitar world might implode. All right, next on our list is somebody who should have been on the other one, and I'm just including him, which is Scotty LePage, and he should be included with Tim Henson in the, uh, the Polyphia spot there on the list because they're really two of the interchangeable band members. They play the same things and can play anything. All right, we're at guitar player number 50. That means we only have 
two more left. First person I want to induct is the person who I said at the very end of my 250 list reaction, Josh Homme in Queens of the Stone Age. One of the best bands ever in the history of time, Queens of the Stone Age is, so that's not a debate. But moreover, Josh Homme's guitar playing is so recognizable, but just so raw and carnal and authentic. And when he plays, it feels like, again, I've only mentioned a couple guitar players who can really channel this. It doesn't feel like you're hearing a guitar, you feel like you're hearing a wall of emotion. And to me, he's one of the greatest guitar players who can do that. And he's not the most technically proficient, or is he? What does that even mean? Just because someone can rip through alternate picking, I think it's a lot harder to do what Josh Ami does and be consistent in your rhythm and your attention to detail with the tones than to just rip through a 16th note run. That's easy. The other thing is hard. And finally, my gimmick, the 51st guitar player who was snubbed from Rolling Stone's 250 Greatest Guitar Players list is a guitar player that I'm sure a lot of you may not know, but... You're about to know him. He was my teacher at Berklee College of Music. Not Tomo Fushida, although I love Tomo. This guy is maybe the best slide guitar player in the world. His name's David Tronzo. And I'm gonna play you something right now. Just listen to it, okay? Just listen, this was my every day when I would get to take lessons from him. He would just do stuff like this. <laughs> All right, so that's what I think. Dave Tronzo, one of the greatest guitar players. You know, this list isn't necessarily in particular order, but of course this is in addition to all the great guitar players that were already on the Rolling Stone list, so that's why, of course, you're not seeing on my list Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, et cetera, et cetera. Those were already on the Rolling Stone list. I think I've made some massive improvements. What do you say? Please leave a guitar player that you think more people need to know about or should be recognized as one of the best to ever do it. And I hope you enjoyed this list update. Make sure you check out Guitar Super System. Black Friday sale is on through Black Friday. Link in the description. Until then, keep shredding.